Tech family, I'm excited. I got to take a look at a Chromebook which I've been wanting to do for some time. I really wanted to see what Chrome OS is like and whether it's worth considering over a budget laptop or another device like an iPad. As usual, I have a ton of thoughts to share. So the way I'm going to do this video is to first talk about this particular Chromebook, the HP X2, a tablet style one. Then I'm going to talk about Chrome OS as a whole. And finally, I'm going to wrap by talking about who should buy this particular device. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I'm Josh, and I buy and review a lot of laptops and talk tech from the perspective of what it's like to own and use these devices. If at the end of this video you like what you watched, don't forget to smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these videos, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. Okay, so the HP Chromebook X2 I have here has an 11 inch 3 by 2 aspect ratio display, 8 gig of RAM, 64 gig eMMC storage and the Snapdragon 7C ARM processor. In the box you also get a pen, the kickstand and a keyboard cover, both of which attach firmly by magnets. So how much do you think this would all cost? If it was an iPad Air with the Apple Pencil and Magic Keyboard, you'd be looking at over a thousand US dollars. Well. In this case, HP advertises the device with these accessories for $599. But HP's pricing is generally the upper end that you'd actually pay. A quick search straight away found this exact unit with the kickstand, keyboard cover and pen for about $379 at Best Buy. Now that was on one of their regular rotating sales. So with that kind of discount this is definitely a device I'd wait to buy on a sale. Anyway, headline news is the HP Chromebook X2 on the surface, no pun intended, seems like a crazy deal, especially at that sale price. So we know this Chromebook is cheap, but let me tell you it does not feel or look cheap. Far from it. It is an extremely well built device. It feels high quality and it looks the part. This is the kind of device that you'd feel proud leaving on the coffee table of a beautifully interior designed room. And I really like the size. It's noticeably smaller than a laptop, but that doesn't translate to increased portability. It's actually quite a bit heavier than an iPad Air. And with the kickstand and keyboard cover, it comes in at over a thousand grams which is around the same weight as HP's own Aero 13, a full blown laptop with a larger display. The Chromebook X2 comes with two USB-C ports, which is great as you can simultaneously charge the device while still having one port available. These are the slower 5 gig ports though. The kickstand is sturdy and both the kickstand and keyboard deck attach tightly and do not come off easily. That always frustrated me with my iPads as the magnetically attached cover came off way too easily. By the way, I use laptops a lot on my lap or lying down on the couch. I've always been concerned that these kind of tablet devices won't be comfortable to use on your lap. I was somewhat correct. This device with its kickstand and keyboard was usable like that, but definitely not as comfortable as a laptop. The one big issue with HP's keyboard is that the deck flexes quite a bit when you type. This bouncy typing experience is not ideal. If you can get used to that though, the rest of the keyboard is pretty good. The keys have comfortable travel, just keep in mind they are a bit smaller than on a regular laptop, not surprising as this is an 11 inch device. I didn't have any issues with that though. Also, I do like the special Chrome OS function keys that allow me to show all open applications, quickly search for something, etc etc. Oh, and by the way, the keyboard isn't backlit. The trackpad though isn't great. I didn't feel it was very accurate. You can of course just touch the screen and that worked well. However, for a device like this that I mainly use in a laptop form factor, I don't find navigating with a touchscreen that comfortable. And that's because my hands spend most of the time resting on the table. It's not a lot of fun to be constantly lifting up my hands to touch the screen. I did try the included pen and it worked well. I'm not a big user of such things so I can't say how it compares to other devices with a pen input. The display is really beautiful, especially in this price range. It has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio with 2160 by 1440 pixels, making everything look super crisp. I couldn't install my Spider X test software on Chrome OS though, so I'm just going to tell you how the display looked to my eyes. Colors looked good and it gets plenty bright. The one negative is that the display is rather reflective. I don't think you'll notice it too much when using it indoors as it gets bright enough to combat the reflections, but I wouldn't want to use this device outdoors or in direct sunlight. The device can be unlocked using the fingerprint reader on the top of the display. You can also unlock it with your phone being nearby, which I didn't actually get time to try. 
Okay, so I haven't mentioned performance yet, and we need to talk about it because it is not a strong point of this device. Nothing felt that snappy. It was definitely usable for watching movies, browsing the web, and doing office work. But even for those tasks, this device just didn't feel as quick as my iPad Pro from a couple of years ago. It just felt like there was a little lag to it. It reminded me of when I recently reviewed the super cheap Chewy Gemi book with its Intel Celeron J4115 processor, which is a much slower processor than what you'd find in a regular laptop. When I ran Geekbench, a benchmark that runs a variety of common performance tasks, it confirmed my hypothesis. The Snapdragon 7C in this Chromebook does indeed perform similar to a Celeron J4115 and is way behind an iPad or a regular Ryzen or Intel laptop. Rounding out performance, Wi-Fi performance was pretty good, although nowhere near the speed I've seen in some of my normal laptops. Here is a test of the webcam. It's a 5 megapixel webcam, but I gotta be honest, the quality isn't as good as I was expecting, unfortunately. Also, what is the hiss coming from the mic? That sounds awful. I have connected with HP, who have acknowledged the issue and are working to fix it. I'll post an update in the description below if I am notified that this issue has been fixed. The 8 megapixel back camera is also unfortunately not great. Battery life depended a lot on what I did on the device. Yes, yes, laptop battery life is always dependent on that, but this device is super dependent. When just watching a movie or typing, I saw over 11 hours remaining, which is exceptional. But when I started using lots of other apps and browsing a ton of sites, I saw the battery life drop to around 6 hours. So you'll probably get somewhere in between. Please note, I was using the X2 with a screen 2 notches down of brightness. If you dimmed it much further, you could definitely eke out more battery life. Sound from the supposed Bung & Olufsen speakers was passable. The sound was loud and clear. But unfortunately, there was no immersive soundstage and the audio sounded a bit tinny, as there was really no bass. Honestly, Bung & Olufsen really needs to rethink whether they are diluting their brand by putting their name on this kind of device. Seriously, if you've ever heard real Bung & Olufsen speakers, you'll know what I mean. I tried the X2 plugged into an external monitor. Chrome OS itself worked very well. However, this Chromebook could not drive a 4K monitor at 60Hz. I was capped at 30. Any on-screen movement looked jolty. When I dropped the resolution down to 1440, I was able to get 60Hz. Alright, let's switch gears and talk about Chrome OS itself. I liked it. I felt it was far more modern and polished than I expected. Applications look beautiful on this 11-inch screen and my external monitor. It didn't feel like a larger screen was an afterthought like running Android on a tablet. Anyway, most applications I tried had a Chrome OS version, and I tested many important applications including Zoom, Citrix, and they all worked well. I also liked that when there was no dedicated Chrome OS application available, I could run Android apps on the device. One such was the CASA Smart Home app, which enabled me to control my lighting from the HPX2. This is the kind of device that I feel would be good to have around the house to control your smart home. That being said, I wasn't able to run any of the professional grade applications I would normally use on Chrome OS, including Premiere Pro for video editing, Rekordbox for DJing, etc, etc. And I certainly couldn't access or run any AAA games on Chrome OS. One cool thing is since Chrome OS is Linux based, you can run Linux applications on it. This enables a ton more. For example, you can run IntelliJ, the integrated software development environment, using that method. Given how poorly the processor though in this Chromebook performs, I didn't waste my time trying that method. Realistically, Chrome OS is clearly designed for casual users just browsing the web, student studying, or those just using basic Office applications. With that specific lens, the biggest issue I found with switching to Chrome OS was file management. I used Dropbox for this YouTube channel. Although I was able to easily install Dropbox on Chrome OS, I found I couldn't create shortcuts to my files stored there. That meant every time I wanted to save or open something for this YouTube channel, I had to navigate through multiple directories, which was really annoying. Perhaps there is a way to do it, but it certainly isn't obvious. I get it. Chrome OS was designed for Google's ecosystem, where everything is on their cloud. But if you're like me, and use other ecosystems to store files, then the Chrome OS experience is likely to be rough. So let's wrap. 
Overall, I thought the Chrome OS operating system was polished and very enjoyable to use. As I mentioned, it's a great option if you're a student or you're just doing basic office work or you're casually browsing the web, answering emails and watching movies. And perhaps even some software developers, so long as the Chromebook you're using is powerful enough. Which brings me to my thoughts on this Chromebook, the HP Chromebook X2. I didn't feel like it let me experience the full potential of Chrome OS. On the plus side, it is phenomenally well built. It looks beautiful, the screen is great, and the price is amazing, especially if you get it on sale. Unfortunately, it's held back by a weak processor, a barely passable keyboard, an uncomfortable trackpad, and a webcam with serious issues. If you have $600 US to spend and are looking for more of a device to be productive on, I'd strongly suggest you buy HP's own Aero 13. I know I gave this device a hard time in my review, mainly because I got sent a fully upgraded model that really wasn't worth the price. But the entry level Aero 13 for around the $600 US mark is very compelling for what you get. It's got a larger screen than this Chromebook, the Ryzen processor inside is way faster, the keyboard and trackpad are more comfortable to use, and it weighs about the same as this device. If you do want a tablet form factor, I'd suggest you look at an iPad. Even an older model iPad or a second hand one would be a better all round device than this one. That being said, if your max budget is less, around $400, US dollars, that changes things quite a bit. Buying this HP Chromebook X2 in that price range when it goes on sale is a solid purchase, so long as HP fixes that webcam. I've tested several devices in that price range and this is very competitive. All right. That's all for today folks, if you like this video you know what to do, smash that like button and get subscribed, I would certainly appreciate it. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok and Twitter for plenty of behind the scenes coverage and thoughts on upcoming tech, links below. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.